Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my farmhouse kitchen. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you all of my favorite ways to use one of my most favorite appliances, which is the Instant Pot. If you guys are new around here, welcome. My name is Becca. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm obviously very passionate about nutrition. I'm also very passionate about cooking um, lots of real whole food, you know, from scratch at home. Also, you know, totally okay with balance. I'm very much an intuitive eater and I share a lot of that here on my channel. But cooking at home most of our meals is something that's really important to me. One, so I can control the ingredients. Two, so I can get a lot of nourishing foods into myself and into, you know, my family. Um, but also because it saves a lot of money. I am someone who is very passionate about healthy food um, and it makes a lot more sense economically to or financially to cook most of it at home and this is something that I have you know really gotten more and more into you know in the last few years as I've started to have kids um, it really does make a big difference and kind of once you get in the habit of cooking most of your food it becomes just something that you do. But I will say having certain appliances that help you take shortcuts um, or just make making things from scratch a lot easier or more hands off make all the difference and the Instant Pot is definitely that appliance for me. It is honestly rare these days for my Instant Pot not to be out hanging out on my counter cooking something. Most days of the week it is out. I'm using it all the time. Some days I even use it multiple times a day. So I'm gonna share with you my absolute favorite things um, to cook in the Instant Pot, what I use the Instant Pot for on like a very regular daily or weekly basis. So I don't really use it to cook whole meals um, per se, but I, I do use it to cook up like certain ingredients. Um, so if you wanna see what I mean, let's just get into it. So the very first thing is like kind of an exception to that rule, and that is oats. I love to use my Instant Pot to cook oatmeal. We love oatmeal for breakfast. It's, um, you know, it's simple, it's quick, it's economical, it's very fiber rich and nutrient rich, and it's very filling, and my kids love oatmeal. So, and they actually especially love the way that the um, I cook it up in the Instant Pot. So I've shared in like What I Eat In A Day videos before how I cook oats in the Instant Pot. Um, so you may already know that, but I've actually been using it in a slightly different way recently because I've actually been soaking my oats overnight. So when you soak grains, um, it basically breaks down some of the anti-nutrients in there. Um, for example, phytic acid. Phytic acid will cling on to nutrients that are in the food and they won't be able to be um, like digested apart. So basically if you have, let's just say um, like iron or something stuck to phytic acid, it's just going to pass right on through your digestive tract and get excreted. It's never actually going to be freed up to allow it to be absorbed into your body. So taking this little extra step can actually free up a lot more or, or make the nutrition in your food a little bit more bioavailable. And when it comes to oats, it's like stupid simple to do this because you really don't add any more steps. You just do it the night before. Um, and it's kind of nice because when you come down in the morning, all I have to do is press a button. So here's what I do or what I've been doing recently as far as cooking my oats in the Instant Pot. Um, we do two cups of um, rolled oats. You can also do this with steel cut oats. It's good either way. Um, and we like both. but to two cups of oats to six cups of water. I just use water for my Berkey and um, two tablespoons of yogurt. And I just put the yogurt in, I mix it all together. And basically that yogurt is what is gonna help um, start to break down. It's actually going to break down that phytic acid overnight. So you need to add a little bit um, like uh, something cultured or acidic in order to bring out about that process um, when it comes to oats. So that's what I do. And then I just let it sit overnight. Um, and then in the morning, all I have to do is just come downstairs and I use um, the porridge setting um, to make oats want to make them this way. You can also use a high pressure and just set it for, you know, however many minutes. Um, but when I do the porridge setting, it's about 20 minutes and I just let it go. I let it do the whole cycle. And then this is kind of important. I do let it like the pressure naturally fully release. Anytime I've tried to open it ahead of time, it gets like stuff is like sputtering out and it's just kind of messy um, for some reason when I make oats this way. So I do like to let it fully naturally release when I come down, you know, early in the morning before the kids are up, I just, press the porridge button, super simple. And it makes the most like 
fluffy, creamy oats. I've never been able to get oats this fluffy um, without, like, unless I've used this like porridge method. And it really does come out more of like a porridge. And for whatever reason, my kids love this so much more. I don't know if it's just because a little, it's a little bit more liquidy. Um, they scarf it down versus sometimes oats could be like hit or miss. All I do is I just add a little bit of butter and melt that into the oats, and then we just top it. You know, however we like. Sometimes my kids like peanut butter in their oatmeal. Um, we'll do fresh fruit or raisins, and it's just you know we add whatever we want to, but that creates like the base, and it's so so good. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a quick second to tell you about my nutrition and intuitive eating program, Mindful Eating Made Simple. This program is all of my knowledge, education, tips, expertise, experience, all in one place where I teach you everything you need to know about not just nutrition, but also how to eat in a way that is healthy and balanced for the lifelong. I am a firm believer that you need to be equipped both with robust nutrition knowledge that makes sense, that can be applied to your daily life, but also understanding how to eat intuitively because I believe that that is the only way to enjoy eating but not go overboard and be able to maintain health and vitality through your lifetime. So if you are just done with being on a cycle of dieting and trying this diet and that diet and failing and trying again and all of that nonsense, or maybe you're just trying to eat healthy, but you find nutrition confusing or you find it stressful and you feel like you kind of end up turning it into a diet in itself and you just can't do it in a way that is relaxed and sustainable and balanced, then this program is for you. I will personally be here to hold your hand and walk you through as you build on this new knowledge and make these changes. My mission is to help women feel confident with healthy eating, but without the complex. And that is exactly what I do in this program. So I will leave a link down below if you are ready to join me inside the program and maybe you're still on the fence. And if that's the case, I would highly recommend taking my free mindful eating mind Set masterclass where you are going to start to learn how to break down that diet mentality, how to eat healthy for the long term in a way that's balanced and sustainable, and also avoid some of the most common mistakes people make when it comes to healthy eating. If this sounds like something you are needing in your life, I so hope to see you inside the program. I want to help you make the changes that are actually going to give you your freedom back, give you your life back, and allow you to eat in a way that has both enjoyment but nourishment at the same time. Next, I love to cook a whole chicken in the Instant Pot. Um, I have always had like a love-hate relationship with whole chickens, but I am like forcing myself to cook them more and utilize them more because they really are the most economical way um, to get high quality chicken. If you're not paying for someone to make all the cuts ahead of time, um, you end up saving a lot more money in the long run. And I have been using my Instant Pot to cook up whole chickens for the last like a couple of months and I'm totally getting into a routine with it and I actually really love them. I've never been like a dark meat fan, but I am starting to get on board. And anyway, I'm just really into whole chickens these days. So how I use the Instant Pot to cook them, you can roast them in the oven and it probably would be like a little bit more delicious, but we typically don't like roast a chicken like for dinner. I just roast a chicken to have a bunch of like chicken cooked on hand to use for other things. Like we could use it in tacos or we could use it to make chicken salad, something like that, or add it to salads. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just take the whole chicken, I cover it in uh, or coat it in olive oil and add spices like um, obviously salt and pepper, garlic powder, paprika, um, parsley, oregano, things like that. Just throw on what you have. And then you put two cups of water in the bottom of the Instant Pot, add in that little trivet so it's not sitting on the bottom. Put in your chicken and then you just cook it on high pressure for 30 minutes. And for this one, I also like to let the pressure release totally naturally. I feel like the longer you go um, and just let it, you can just let it sit because it'll keep it warm. The longer you go, the more tender the chicken ends up being. And it's really good. Like when it comes out um, of the Instant Pot, it's also really fun. Kids apparently love to debone chickens. My daughter is, who's four is always like, oh, yeah, I want to help. I want to debone the chicken. She loves pulling out the bones. And then huge benefit of making the whole chicken. A, it's super easy in the Instant Pot. You're not worried about it overcooking or undercooking like you might have in the oven. Um, but then you can take that same pot that has all the leftover juices and whatever from the chicken. And when you debone the chicken, you just put all the bones and the carcass and everything extra, the ligaments and whatnot back in the pot. Which brings me to my third favorite use for the Instant Pot and that is making your own homemade chicken stock, um, also known as bone broth. So. 
Bone broth was honestly what finally got me to start buying whole chickens because when you go to the store and you buy bone broth, um, it's, I mean, it's, it's basically like, it's not anywhere near as nutritious. Um, there are some really good brands, but I mean, if you're just buying like the square box chicken broth, even if it's labeled bone broth, it is not the same as like true bone broth that has been long simmered for a long time and really allows all the nutrients and the collagen and the gelatin and whatever else to seep into the liquid. Um, and it's expensive, like to buy the not so great <laughs> bone broth. And when I finally realized like that's how much this really costs, wow, I could be just buying a whole chicken and then making bone broth for free. It was just like a no brainer. So that was finally what clicked for me. So anyway, you throw all of, I literally, I cook the whole chicken and then whatever's left in the pot, I leave in there and then I, we, we debone it and we put everything back in. And then um, I add either like two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar or you could also add like a cup of white wine. I think the flavor comes out better when you do that, but either way works. And then um, you can add veggies in to also make it taste, um, improve the flavor and the taste. But here's a little tip that I also learned recently. Instead of, you know, like chopping up an onion and throwing in some carrots and celery, what you do instead is you just save like the, you know, the bits of celery that you cut off the end, the scraps of carrot that you peeled off, and the ends of the onion and all the onion skin. Um, most of the time I throw those to our chickens, which sometimes I still do, but especially if you don't have chickens, take all of those extras, don't throw them in the trash, put them in a Ziploc bag and stick them in your freezer. And the next time you go to make bone broth, just pull that out and dump all those odds and ends in. So you are not adding in any like fresh ingredients. You're making use of what would have gone to the chickens or in the trash, and it's adding even more nutrients and more flavor um, and depth to your bone broth. Once you have all your ingredients in there, I set it for an hour and 20 minutes. Um, obviously you wanna make sure the pressure is sealed and I just let it go. And then if you really want to get like a good, um, like they call gel on your bone broth, like you want it to be, um, you really wanna see that like collagen in there, you want it to thicken up, which is like kind of the whole reason you're making bone broth. Um, you wanna repeat that. So I do it for another hour and 20 minutes. And I will usually just let this go, like I'll do it at night after we like say we cook a chicken during the day I'll set the first hour and 20 minutes and then I'll do the ne next hour and 20 minutes when I get to it and then it just keeps it warm so it'll just hold it till the next day and then you just take um, a strainer you pour all of the, <clears throat> the broth out you'll see it's like a rich deep golden color um, and then just remove all of the excess stuff and then you can just put it into jars. You can store it in your fridge for like a week or you can, um, if you have excess that you know you're not gonna use right away, go ahead and stick it in your freezer and that will keep for a few months. The next thing I love to use my Instant Pot for is hard boiled eggs. So hard boiled eggs are another one of those things where you have to babysit them on the stove, you have to like, watch and wait for it to boil and then you may, you don't want to cook them too long or the sulfur will develop and they'll be green and gross. So you, if you put them in the Instant Pot, it's one of those like set it and forget it. They're going to turn out pretty good no matter what. Um, and that's one of the reasons I love it. But another reason that I love it is if you are someone who does have chickens and your eggs are really fresh, you'll know that when you hard boil them, they are so hard to peel. Um, so, but when you put them in the Instant Pot, they're very, very simple to peel. So that's another reason I love using it for that reason. Um, anyway, so how I actually do it is you put um, water in, the start with water in the bottom of your Instant Pot, like a cup or two. You're gonna put that trivet in um, so that they're not resting on the bottom. If you don't have a trivet, trivet you could do like balls of tin foil or something in the bottom. Um, but the Instant Pot that I use, which I'll link down below, comes with one. Put the trivet in and you want the water to be like almost up to the trivet. Put your eggs in and what I do is like a five, five, five. So I will set the timer, um, high pressure, cook for five minutes. And then once the five minutes are done, I let it sit for another five minutes before I release the pressure. After five minutes, I turn the knob, all the steam comes out, we release the pressure. And then I take those eggs and I put them into an ice bath because that's going to like completely stop the cooking for another five minutes. So you can play around with this timing. If you like, this makes what I would say like perfect hard boiled eggs. Sometimes I like my eggs to be a little bit more like jammy um, and not um, fully cooked. 
or like as far as the yolk goes. Um, so you could go like four minutes, you could like play around with it a little bit to get your like perfect hard boiled eggs, but you can't go wrong with the five, five, five. And then here's another little tip when it comes to actually getting the peels off of your egg, take a cup or a mason jar, throw the egg in and just shake it up with your hands and you will see like the whole, sh uh, the whole shell will really crack in like a bunch of places and then it will literally just slide right off. It makes it so easy. Okay, the next thing I wanted to mention is one of my favorite ways historically I've used my Instant Pot um, and it's to cook chicken breasts. So like I said, I've been using whole chickens a lot more recently um, and you can make shredded chicken easily from the chicken from a whole chicken, but you can also so easily make if you just want like chicken breasts and you want to make shredded chicken, the Instant Pot is going to be your like your best bet because again, you can just throw it in, set it and forget it. It's not going to overcook or undercook. They're going to come out like juicy. Love that. So you can just make plain chicken. You can maybe season it with salt and pepper. Um, you need to add like a cup of water to the bottom always to the Instant Pot so that you, it doesn't like burn. Um, or another thing that you can do is if you want to make taco chicken, um, what I'll do is I will add the chicken breasts in. Um, I'll put in a bunch of salsa and then like taco seasoning spices, um, whether you make it yourself or you get like a packet. Um, and then what I do for chicken breasts if they are completely thawed, I'll cook them on high pressure for 12 minutes. Um, if they're not thawed, you can throw them in there frozen. Um, I typically don't do this, but 15 minutes should be enough. I usually put them in there thawed, but you could do technically either way. Um, so then what you do after the chicken is all cooked to shred it so easily, you actually take a hand mixer and just stick it right down in that pot and go to town. It will shred that chicken so fast. Gone are the days where you need to take the two forks and you need to shred the whole thing by hand, which takes so much more time than is necessary and most people have a hand mixer. So go ahead and take that hand mixer, mix it up. You can also, if you have a stand mixer, take that all of that chicken, throw it in there and it will shred it up. Either way works, use whatever you have. The next thing I love to use my Instant Pot for is rice. This is probably the very first thing I started using an Instant Pot for, um, for a couple of reasons. A, like a lot of the other things, you don't have to babysit it on the stove. Um, rice can take a really long time to cook if done on the stove top, um, if it's not like instant rice, if it's just, you know, standard rice. Um, and then it's really easy to mess up. It's easy to like burn the bottom or, you know, just it, it really is something that you could, if you're not paying attention, mess it up. And using the Instant Pot, you can throw it in as long as like the, you do everything correct, like the right liquid to rice ratio, and you cook it for the right amount of time, it's gonna come out perfect every single time. Um, and I make rice probably at least a couple times a week, whether we're having like, um, maybe it's like a chicken and rice dish, or we're having some kind of like skillet, um, like, a, like a taco skillet or something like that. We make rice all the time, so I'm always pulling out the Instant Pot, dumping rice in there. Um, so for whole, like, or not whole grain, I'm sorry, brown rice, um, this is what I do. I do one cup of rice, to one and one fourth cup of water. So a little bit more water than there is rice. And I cook it for 15 minutes. Brown rice takes a long time, high pressure, 15 minutes. Um, it needs that amount of time to cook. White rice, on the other hand, cooks up much faster. And I typically do one cup of white rice to one cup of water. So the ratio is this is one to one. Um, and then I cook white rice for about four or for four minutes on high pressure. And um, I usually let the pressure release. I honestly don't pay attention too much to that. I just, whenever I'm cooking and whenever I need it, I just open it up. Sometimes the pressure fully releases, sometimes it doesn't release. It usually always turns out fine. <laughs> Okay, and the last thing I love using my Instant Pot for is making yogurt. If you are not making yogurt at home, I so encourage you to try it. It may like feel a little bit intimidating, but I promise you it's not. And one, homemade yogurt is so creamy, but it's also so much like cheaper than buying it from the store. To get like high quality, you know, um, in yogurt that has good ingredients that you know hopefully the milk is coming from like pasture-raised grass-fed cows it can get up there in price but you can buy high quality milk and turn it into yogurt really easily at home and especially with the instant pot it is so hands-off you don't need an instant pot um, or a yogurt maker 
Instant Pot has like a yogurt setting, but you, there are also, also are separate yogurt makers. You don't technically need one of those to make yogurt. Um, you can do it on the stove top and then just store the jars in like a warm place for, you know, eight to 24 hours. You can do it that way, but it's just another one of those things where the Instant Pot, I feel like I can just set it and forget it. As a busy mom, I just don't have like the bandwidth or the mental space all the time to be like really on top of like food that is cooking or fermenting or whatever, any way that I can make it simpler and make it more doable, I will like happily invest in. So the Instant Pot for me is like the goat when it comes to making yogurt. So how you actually do it is um, I do a quart of milk at a time. Um, so I make a quart of yogurt at a time, which tends to be enough for us. Um, and I just make it like once a week or so just depending on when we need more, but you can make, you can make like up to a gallon at a time if you want. Um, if you have the space in your Instant Pot. So you put your milk in, into the Instant Pot, and I use a quart, and then um, I will, or you press the yogurt button until it says boil, because the first thing you need to do is you need to heat up the milk. So let it go like the full boil cycle, and then when it's done, just take a little um, food thermometer, double check that it's right around 180 degrees, that's where you want it, and then you're just gonna let it cool for um, a few minutes until it gets down to 110 degrees. So you can just let it sit on your countertop and it'll take you know 10 or so minutes, um, or you can stick it, you can stick the pot into a big bowl with ice water and that will cool it down really quickly up to you um, this is like the only part that you're really kind of paying attention and have to be on top of it otherwise the rest of the process is super hands-off so once it gets down to 110 degrees you want to add in your yogurt starter so if you already have yogurt you've been making batches of yogurt then you just use that simple yogurt you pull it right out of the fridge which is what I do you put in two tablespoons um, this is for a quart if not you'd have to add more. Um, but for a quart of milk, I do two tablespoons of the yogurt and mix it all in. And then that is how you're going to actually add in the cultures that are going to ferment the rest of that milk, sour the rest of that milk into yogurt. Um, if you don't have um, yogurt that you can use to start it, you can buy what's called a yogurt starter. You don't necessarily want to use just like any old yogurt from the grocery store because you don't want it to be flavored. Um, you want to make sure that it actually has like the active cultures um, survive pasteurization. Like it's, it's a little bit tricky to use store-bought yogurt to do this. So I would recommend just getting a yogurt starter. That's how I started mine. Um, I love cultures for health. I'll link the specific one down below um, that I have used and it's an heirloom culture, meaning you can make use that same yogurt to make batch after batch after batch after batch, kind of like sourdough. So um, I would grab one of those and it's like a one-time purchase and you just keep on using it. And you, you just follow the instructions that first time and instead of adding yogurt in um, to the 110 degree milk, you add just the yogurt starter in and then you can start making your own. So once you add your starter in, you put the lid on. Um, it's not under pressure, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it's just holding it at the correct temperature. So then I just press the yogurt button again. Um, you can set it for eight hours or you could set it up to like 24 hours. Um, depending on when I put the yogurt in, depending on what, like, what type, time of day it is, I don't wanna be like getting yogurt in the middle of the night when it's done, obviously. So I'll set it for, like I could go up to 24 hours. And then the next day, um, whenever I have time, I go in and check it. You just wanna move like the bowl around. And if the yogurt is like moving away from the bowl um, and it's not like running down the side, that's how you know it's thick enough, it's cultured and it's ready to take out. So then you just take the yogurt out, you pour it into um, like jars or a bowl or whatever you're gonna store it in in your fridge. And then you wanna refrigerate it for about eight hours, which is gonna help it to thicken up even more. And that is gonna make your standard yogurt. If you want thicker, more like Greek style yogurt, you can pour all of that yogurt into um, like cheesecloth um, and you're gonna let all of that excess liquid drain out into a bowl and then what's left in that cheesecloth is gonna be much thicker, more concentrated, higher in protein, um, more Greek, like Greek style yogurt. Okay, you guys, so those are my favorite ways to use the Instant Pot, at least at this, this point in time. Like I said, my Instant Pot is almost a permanent fixture out on my counter because on any given day, I might have broth cooking or yogurts, you know, culturing or a whole chicken going or, you know, oats that are, you know, sitting out overnight to um, soak before we make them the next day. It's just something that I'm pulling out every single day. I think it's so worth it. It's very multi-purpose. And again, to make healthy from scratch cooking at home more of a reality, 
for me, and I know all my busy moms out there, even if you're not a mom, you are probably so busy. That's just the world we live in. Everything is fast paced and you're trying to make this more of a reality at home. Anything that's going to you know, automate things a little bit and allow it to be more hands off is so worth the investment, I think. Instant Pots are not crazy expensive and I think they are so worth every penny. It's like a workhorse truly in my kitchen. And again, it makes cooking from scratch a little bit more attainable. Um, you know, it's not very, it's, I'm messing things up less because I'm not having to babysit them. And I just, it's like a permanent fixture on my counter. I'm using it all the time. So I will link my exact one down below um, that I use. I love it so much. I feel like the size is really good. Um, I used to have a smaller one years ago and I finally switched to this one and I'm so, so glad that I did. I love it so much. Um, so I'll link that down below for you guys. If you have any ways that you love to use your Instant Pot that I didn't mention here, I would love to hear it down, down in the comments below. Share with me how you love to use yours so we can all kind of you know share ideas and learn from each other. If you have yet to subscribe, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel, join my little community here on YouTube, and of course, also comment down below any video requests you have because I love hearing those from you guys. I love getting your feedback um, and trying to just make videos that you want to see. So thank you guys again for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Instagram too if you're not already. Um, but that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.